Well, we finally made it. It's Sunday, the finale at Hampton Classic, the FTI $200,000 World Cup Grand Prix. There's a lot on the line. $200,000, World Cup points, and let's not forget about those computerless points. Fence one, the Wolfer Estates Oxer, away from home. Time allowed has been tight all week. We expect it to be the same today. What does that mean? It means it, the horses and riders are gonna need to start with pace. Conrad is already tempting you to fall asleep and get behind the time allowed of the course. Fence two is very far away, jumping right into the extremely busy, celebrity-filled galley and tables. Fence two, the David Yerman Oxer. It's square, it's wide, it's not extra large, but the horses do need to be on their game. Conrad Homefeld, our course designer today, has given us two pleasant oxers to get started. And then here comes the first wake up call. If you're not ready for business, this is where your day ends. A sharp right hand turn to a tall Jaguar vertical that actually rides taller than it is because we're going uphill. It's this vertical with a related distance to the signature Hampton Classic double Liverpools. Here we get a little visit with our course designer, Conrad Homefeld. Are we going up? No. Just making sure the correct rail is on top. And you'll notice that the standards are not pushing the rail in the cup. So the, the cup, the rail rolls very lightly and easily within and, and out of the cup. Very important to see. As you can see, there's no friction. So careful horse, scopey horse. If you don't have it, you can't play. Okay, again, experience will help these riders. This walks like a tight four strides to this very square oxer with this black Liverpool underneath it. The fact is off that tight turn up this hill to this very full Liverpool, this four is probably gonna ride a little longer than it walks. Some riders are gonna get caught by surprise at just how much horse they're gonna need to get up to and over this oxer. This combination, again, we have a reverse Liverpool, a tall vertical with the Liverpool behind it. The horses will be looking down at the water instead of this top rail. That's the problem. As soon as we land, for time allowed purposes, sharp left turn over to the Prudential vertical. And now, ladies and gentlemen, join us in honoring this year's Olympic team champions, the gold medal team for the United States of America, with the singing of the Star Spangled Banner. 
And as you were, just one moment, please. We'll just hold up for one moment, if you would, please. Clayton and Jonathan, if you'd like to exit for a moment, we'll continue with our opening ceremonies here, just standing by, if you would. And again, riders will be heading out to prepare for our competition that is ahead of us. We'll direct our attention here in just a moment to our national anthem and on to our major Grand Prix show jumping event that is ahead of us here this afternoon. Take a moment to introduce and just recognize our officials that will be a part of our Hampton Classic this year as we introduce Dennis Suskind, president of our Hampton Classic Horse Show Incorporated, Jeanette Barth-Cohen, the executive director, and our equestrian manager, who we also met, Steve Stevens from Palmetto, Florida. Our course has been designed by Conrad Homefeld, our resident course designer here, and uh, Conrad from Wellington, Florida, and also serving on the ground jury this afternoon. Yeah, Members like include so. president of the FBI jury of Ellington, Florida, Jose Pepe Gamara, we also have Mr. Neil O'Connor from Southampton, Jenny Ross of Loxahatchee, Florida, Pottersville, New Jersey resident Christine Tauber, Jason Gates of Tequesta, Florida, and Philip A. DeVita of Apopka, Florida. Lloyd Longnecker serving as the president of the Appeals Committee in our competition. Our electronic scoreboard has been provided by Rygate Show Services, and you will see all the action. And catch up on all the action. You'll see what I say up on our scoreboard and operated by Chad Vanderlinde and Lloyd Longnecker on behalf of Rygate Show Services. FEI steward is David Disler of Norwalk, Connecticut. Dr. Ronald Gaeta of Brookfield, Connecticut, our FEI veterinarian. And our schooling supervisor is Joseph Stone of Davie, Florida. Kevin Giblin of Spring Lake, New Jersey is our starter, and our stewards include Ralph Alfano from Wellington, Florida, and Lisa Levy from Roslyn, New York. Dr. James Meyer of East Hampton, New York, East End Equine, serving as our veterinarians. Equine Ambulance provided by Hart Equine Ambulance, headquartered in Northampton, Massachusetts. Just a moment, we'll continue on with our opening ceremonies leading up to our first horse of a starting lineup of 34 competitors that will be involved in our $200,000 presentation here today. The road to Las Vegas continues. The World Cup Finals will be staged in Las Vegas in April of 2009. And we'll all be a part of action as the riders will start to accumulate points towards the World Cup Finals in order to earn the right to compete for their respective leagues. The World Cup Finals will tell you more about it as we proceed through our afternoon program. Thank you for bearing with us for just a moment as we tend to one of our fallen members of our VIP party this afternoon. And we'll be continuing on with the balance with our anthem here. So we ask you just to bear with us to stand by, please. We've seen more trouble at this single vertical than most people expected. So hopefully at this point the riders are on their game and they know to take a little time, get the horses balanced, slow them down a little bit and not take this for granted. As you can see this is a very tall vertical right on the crown of the hill. It's quite tall. Not the tallest on the course but very tall. Then, in the interest of time, it's land, turn, and go. Interestingly enough, this particular oxer, this narrow but square wide oxer, 
has jumped pretty well all week. Oftentimes, this is a very hard jump. Maybe it will be more true to its colors today. It's sitting on the crown, a very narrow rail. It's lighter, comes down much more easily. This is, it should be a tough jump. But this week, with the good ground, beautiful day, the horses have been jumping it well all week. We land, we're not gonna do a related distance. Our next challenge is the open water fence seven, going right towards home. What the riders are gonna wanna do here is make sure that they, they have enough momentum so that the horse easily carries across the water. At this level, most of the horses will not have a problem with the water jump. The water jump in and of itself is only the beginning of the hard question, which is the delicate blue hammock vertical that comes up after it. As we come over here, you can see that all week, this blue hammock vertical has been causing problems. It's airy. The horse's attention is drawn down children's courts with a singing of the Star Spangled Banner. Very nicely done, and we thank them for standing by, and we thank all of your patience here in the opening ceremonies for our Captain Classic Grand Prix. Our first horse and rider will be with us in just about three to four minutes now as they just had to back up their warm-up, and we'll be underway here in just a couple minutes with our first-round action of our $200,000 class. Richest purse in our history here of the Hampton Classic with the uh, prize money that will be offered right. here today, as we so mentioned. So the horses very are very really going to be thinking of going straight to the out and not turning and jumping a delicate, tall, careful vertical, the blue hammock music vertical. Some horses are going to need an awful lot of speed to get across the water. Some will jump high in the air and land balanced and organized. From fence number eight, they'll head around to our widest obstacle for the first round. This is a meter seven in width, yellow, gray, and striped rails that are flanked by the bark pillars. And this fence number nine. So this is a very difficult jump. The horse's focus again is going to be on the gate, not on this obstacle. It's six and a half strides, six and a half steps apart. What are the riders going to do? They're going to fade way out and maybe do seven strides, so their horse is less likely to plow through the top rail, or they're going to go in on the six and just try to stay in the rhythm of the course. We'll see. Then we have a nice long gallop to the ditch obstacle. We have a, Conrad has set a square, an airy square oxer. It's very square and quite wide over the ditch. Again, as you're riding to this, the, the closer you get, the more the horses are gonna look down into this brown pit. 
So the riders are going to try to keep their focus up, not down at the ditch, but up to pay attention to that, that front rail. And what the ditch does is make the horses A, look down, and B, not carry across the back rail. Now we make a very neat turn just around the signature Hampton Classic bridge water jump to what is usually one of the hardest parts of the course, the triple combination, 10 ABC. The horses are starting to get tired and you can hear the buzz of the crowd here. The, the, the Grand Prix is not even on yet. This is a very distracting location. Unlike yesterday, this combination is pretty much set all at the same height. We have a difficult vertical, tight one to a square wide oxer, and then a short two to a tall vertical, the C element. If your horses are so careful that they don't hit the vertical and stay off the front rail, then they're likely to go up high and come down on this wide back rail of 10B. If they're good about soaring over the back rail of B, <laughs> there's a good chance they'll plow through the front rail. Then we move quickly, make time, four jumps to go. If you Here we go, Ernie. First horse is on course. FTI $200,000 Grand Prix. Alan Keeley's sounding the horn. And we are set to begin. What a day. I tell what a you, day. I, I said to Shinette Cohen this morning, I said, I don't know what you did, what God you spoke to up there earlier this week, but this is as beautiful a Grand Prix Sunday as I can remember. What a great week it's been, and this is the culmination. It the main event indeed. begins. So here we go. The time allowed is 96 seconds. There's 17 jumping efforts, and I tell you, they say today, several people have walked by, some of the riders saying, by far the biggest track we've seen in a while. Tough, very tough, very technical. Conrad Homefeld has quite a few questions out here to be answered. Let's see how uh, Ramiro Quintana does on Catherine Quirk's Sydney. Now, this format's different than what we've seen in the past few days. Remember, as you and I were talking about this, the jump-off format is we watch all 34 competitors go. Those who are clean within the time allowed come back for the jump-off. Those of you that were watching earlier saw the course walk with Peter Leone. Again, placement of jumps. Conrad Homefeld coming right up with the first related distance line here. Pretty tight in the four. He went to the whip. Oh! Right out of the box, Conrad has those the double ditches. They're working their magic right from the beginning, that 4AB. Scott, when I showed you the uh, printout, printout this morning of what the course looks like, your reaction to me was, Ernie, it is not only hard, it's one of the hardest that you've seen here at the Hampton Oh, no Classic. question. I mean, this, this is tough. I mean, look at, right off of the water, he has that blue hammock music there, that, that tall, tall vertical right by the in gate, jumping and turning, jumping and turning all the way. Coming around to the, oh, very tough, very tough triple combination right there, right by the Grand Prix tent. Again, technical as can be. Big ox are here. Now to the FTI. Very tall vertical. Four strides to the hedge. Coming around to the last jump, Animal Planet. The tallest vertical on the on the course is the last jump, which is that Animal Planet vertical. So four down, 16 faults. Tough course we're gonna be seeing. I, I believe we're gonna be seeing a lot of rails flying today. First one in. It was not an easy course to uh, negotiate. And the time is tight. And what advice would you give one of your riders, Scott, 
looking at the complexity of this course. Truthfully, I'm talking to several of the riders this morning, Danielle, Toronto, several of them. I said, you know, what, what's it what's it feel like? And they said, you know what? Bottom line is leave them up and stay within the time allowed. There's no <laughs> other way to put it. <laughs> Ultimately, no other that's way. all that counts. No other way to put it. At this league and at this level, it's really what it's about. It's knowing your horse, knowing that you've got to be able to find those jumps out of an open stride, open gallop, knowing that you're going to, have to be very, very aware of not only just the time, but the track that you're keeping. We have the moments Nona of preparation are over. It's oh, test yeah. time. Absolutely. Here we have uh, Nona Garson on her nice horse, Langooster. Let's see how he... T he's a huge jump. Very, very... What we call a scopey jump. Let's see how he negotiates this course. You can see a lot of power in his jump, Bernie. Really a, a true power, a power jump. Let's see how he is on the first first line here. Oh, it's going to be the tough one. Double ditches, Ernie. Wow. And double ditches there. Four strides to the 4A and 4B. Very tough two stride. And the, with the water underneath of it, it's not easy. And that's right out of the box. He gives you two jumps and then right to the first first line. Tough, very tough. Two riders in and two riders who've had a very difficult time negotiating this course. But this is what it's all about, right, Scott? No question. He's at the top of the game right now. Whoever wins today... It's not a, it, it, it's not a given. This oh, is no. a very, very difficult course. You're watching the $200,000 FTI Grand Prix, and it's also an FTI World Cup qualifier. And that what that means, again, is what we're dealing with is that we're dealing with those riders that are looking at Las Vegas. They're already thinking about Las Vegas 2009. What would it be like to be there to represent your country? And this is the way it begins, by garnering the points right from the get-go, and this is the first one. And again, that's a qualifier. You have to go week after week, and only specific Grand Prix are actually World Cup qualifying classes. Next rider in is Leslie Howard. Now, those of you that were listening this morning, I spoke with Leslie and talked to her about this class. This is a very important class to Leslie. She's never won this class before. I know she has her eyes set on it today. And as she said, you know, Conrad's just going to keep asking question after question. We really have to be on our toes. Scott, this has been a dangerous combination today. Come on, Les. Wow. You can tell Leslie spent a lot of time in the tack over the years, certainly uh, with her time that she spent up at Spruce Meadows in Alberta, Al Alberta, Calgary, Canada. She's dealt with a lot of the natural obstacles. So that's not, that's not a foreign ride to her. She, ha she knows that ride well. There at the big black water at seven, and then, boy, that blue hammock jump comes up very quickly down there at fence number eight. Clear so far, coming around to the triple combination, making sure she has him. Oh, she just had that. C of the combination down. Well, it's a big oxer. FTI jump. It's a big vertical right to that hedge. And then around to the tallest vertical on course being the animal planet jump. And 
Time of 93.02. So that gives you an idea of what type of pace you're going to have to maintain in order to stay within the time. She stayed on the pace. Great ride on Leslie's part. Unfortunate rail coming off of the combination. Here we have uh, Addison Phillips now, probably one of our youngest riders. She's 19 years old and a very impressive rider. I know this is, a, this is a big track for her. As she spoke to us earlier this week, she said, you know, I didn't really get to practice this week. She only had one class to really practice, which was the Friday class. And uh, she said, my horse feels good, but I'm going to have to really ride hard for a clear round. Addison's always been a real force to be reckoned with throughout her junior career and has moved right up into the Grand Prix. Uh, too oh, bad. She does have some rails. Too now. bad. Had that second part of that double down. Very difficult, those ditches. Scott, let's take a quick break from our live action. More to follow. Stay with us. It's Grand Prix Sunday here at the Hampton Classic Horse Show. Classically East End, enduring windmills, gracious homes from the past, glorious fields of sunflowers, and an exceptional local bank demonstrating a timeless commitment. Picture the possibilities with a bank that does the same. The Bridgehampton National Bank, the bank you can talk to. www.bridgenb. When we come back, Matt, we'll uh, shoot the... Range Rover Sport. Visit your local Land Rover Center. And we're back with Laura Bowery just cantering on course right now. Local favorite here in the Hamptons. This is her hometown, Bridgehampton, New York. So we're going to really be giving, really be giving her a little extra encouragement here. I really would love to see a clear round for the local favorite today. She's on Indy Star. This is a horse that she knows really well. We spoke, we spoke to um, Laura earlier this week, and she said he feels terrific. He likes this field. Uh, he's fit. He's strong, ready to go. Owner's Joseph Demena. Indy Star 2 is a 12 year old sale proxy shown by Laura Bowery for Joseph Demena and Aphelios. Two times in the top four on our Sunday prime reaction. Rider back in 1999 appeared with the United States on three occasions. She's ready. She's ready. It's her favorite show of the year. Laura said, you know, I know it sounds, you know, kind of corny, but I love coming home. I love being in my own bed, and I love this horse show. And she is loved here. Yeah, she really, you know, she's, she's a town favorite. As, as um, Frederico Sterl said yesterday, she's my neighbor. She's my, she's my next-door neighbor, and uh, they work together. They help each other. And, you know, that's what it really comes down to at the end of the day. Yes, they're competitors. But because this is such an individual sport, we don't have that much team competition in this country, not like Europe. Nice come job. On, come on. She knows this time is tight. She's being very, very aware of that.
Wow. EZ. Ah, oh, looked like he just got a little flat there at the blue hammock jump. That vertical comes up very quickly. Around the combination, right next to the Grum pretent. Uh, had that down coming out. Again, that oxer comes up so quickly after that combination. A little extra power there. Let's see how she is over the, the final jump, the Animal Planet. And so just the 12 faults, she gave, she gave it her all. She really did. Stayed within the time of, within the time allowed, but with 12. Scott, we've had five riders so far, and no one has yet to post a clear round. Looks like we're in store for a challenging, challenging afternoon. No question. But watch, watch this rider. Watch her. She's going to go over the course. She gets up there by the water. She's going to go over it one more time. Skylar always does that. No matter where she is throughout the world, she remembers her course. She goes over the track, remembering which jumps, how they're numbered, yeah, she's counting how, it off and how they ride. Skylar's done it for years, since the very beginning. Yep, she always has, no matter where she is in the world, and she has represented our country in many different, in many different occasions. She's a real competitor. She's bringing along quite a few nice young horses. She's, she's had some terrific, terrific wins over the years. Debbie. We're looking at Debbie. Is this? No, uh, Skylar. No, this is Skylar. No, they, they have it wrong. It's just up on the scoreboard. This is Skylar Riley. Come on, Skylar. Clear so far. Wow. Really setting up for this. Gave herself a little more time. I thought it was going to stay up. Unfortunately, the slightest rub there behind brought that jump down. Still, she's going to stay. Really try to stay with, within the time allowed. She knows she has four. She's going to just stay with the time, looking to be the fastest four falter right now. Great ride there. Our sponsors jump FTI jump certainly placed in a position where it's it's technical it's right in front of the hedge and I tell you that's going to certainly pose some problems like it two just did two knockdowns well, there were two knockdowns eight faults one time fault very difficult this course is uh, for the for the having for anyone who's able to come in and oh yeah post a clear round here we have James Benedetto. James Benedetto just coming off of his uh, developing riders tour this summer. Terrific local favorite here, shown at the Hampton Classic for, as we spoke earlier this week, I believe it's 25 years he's been going to this horse show. We're coming to you live here from the Hampton Classic Horse Show. The eyes of the equestrian world are focused on Bridgehampton on this event. 
You know, and, and as Debbie Stevens said earlier this week, it's really considered the Aachen of this country. And Aachen really is the number one horse show in the world. No question. Yes. And it, to me, the most important thing that we have to remember is that with this footing, with this footing, this grass footing, horses just jump great. They just jump great on this. They really do. That is when it's footing like we have today. But here at the Hampton Classic, we've certainly seen every type of weather condition known to man. So we are certainly grateful. I know James is so far clear. down behind just to, uh, had it down behind hmm. it's really something today is is amazing the difficulty of this course oh yeah and the plot's only going to thicken once we get to the jump off Coming home now to the tall vertical. Interesting. It's the first time that jump has come down now, Ernie. There were twi Too bad. Well, time of 95.86, but there were two knockdowns. Only one rider, and that was um, Leslie Howard, uh, posted uh, time of 93.02. Right, with four. But she had four faults. Remember, with that time allowed, Ernie, as long as they're within that 96 seconds, we are they're in good shape. Bottom line, so she's she does the reason why we keep the time allowed. If there's another four falter, and when that happens, fastest four falter in the lead at this point. It's the way it is. But again, once what we realize for sure is that if we have four fault, falters, we have a jump off. Remember, four falters, no matter what. I think we're going to see a couple clear today. I, I think they're just starting to get an idea of the way this track is to be ridden. Let's see how Jimmy Toronto does on Ormsby Hill. We spoke to him earlier, as you know, those of you that were watching. Likes this horse a lot. Very special horse, happens to be by the same sire as his wife's horse, Danielle. So we'll be seeing her later on today. Setting up for this tight four. Great ride there. Easy. Come on, Jimmy. Oh. Looked like he just started to bolt toward the in gate, went to balance him, and then he just went right towards the in gate. Too bad. I wonder so what our riders are saying in the uh, uh, warm up ring. Well, I mean, in anticipation. You know, this is a veteran. I mean, Jimmy Toronto's a veteran. I know that they're concerned because that's placed there. That jump is placed there with that type of question in mind. Are the horses going to be drawn towards the in gate and catch the rider a little bit off guard while they're settling? It happened. Great horse, though. As Peter and I were talking about earlier this week, we're really very fond of this horse. And unfortunately, 12 faults with two times, so unfortunately we won't be seeing him later today. What a crowd we have today. Well, I, I look, just looked over at the scoreboard and I see a, a full house here. This is very exciting. Wow. Full house. Full house enjoying this great event. Here we have one of, another one of our young riders, Sloan Coles. We've spoken to her earlier this week and she's... Wow, is she excited about being here today. Two 
terrific young lady. Let's see how she does. This is a big track for her, no doubt about it. This is a tough one. Easy As we witnessed first. yesterday, it took the last rider of the day, 55 riders, yep. to come in and win it. So it sure did. Let's see how she does. Come on, Sloan. She knows it's going to take a lot of horse right here. While we're watching Sloan Coles, we have Skylar Riley just coming to sit with me for a moment. Talk about the course. Give us some ideas as we're watching Sloan. What are your thoughts here as you were coming around to the sixth jump here on course, Skylar? What did it feel like to you? Um, I think Conrad has built an exceptional track today. You know, it's really big. It's really scopy. Um, I was on an inexperienced horse. It's his first time at the Hampton Classic. But boy, he looked good. He you know, and he, on Friday, he had a bit of stage fright. He came out okay. here, was a little swallowed up by the ring. But today, he came out, and he feels like he's really learned something here. And I could tell when I sort of made it through the double verticals. Yeah and the Prudential because he doesn't necessarily like the crowd. He right. went right up to the Prudential and number six felt incredible. And strong, I mean, he was right there for right you. Right there, Scopey, that's never been a question. It's just his brain, he uh, he really wants to do it, but he's a bit ADD. Yes. And that's where I lost him a little after the water. <laughs> How so, what, what did it feel like to you? He bulged a little towards the gate and uh, he just got a little crooked in his body and just touched it. Uh, now um, we we just saw that with Jimmy Toronto's horse. Yeah. He, you know it, that is that the question right there right now that Absolutely. Conrad's asking? Absolutely, because the water itself is really a little bit of a non-entity because it's headed towards the gate. It's not at its widest, okay. but you have a long approach to it, and you know his time allowed is tight. So you pick up the pace. You're aimed right at the gate. I mean, just like a target, a bullseye. A target. And it just they just draw you to the gate. And it's either that you can do an inside six strides. Yes. Which sometimes, I don't know, on do some get, horses get you might be better because they don't even have time to think of the gate. Right, They're just right. going directly to it. Really good point because it looked like I, I, I couldn't wait till you get, could get here. I was like, go get her now because I wanted your strategy on that. You know Conrad as well as anybody. The question there, is it six strides? Is it seven strides? You balance up for yeah. the seven. Then you leave yourself wide open for the bulge and, and the draw towards the end gate. Exactly. And my horse has a little bit of a natural left bulge as it is, which I thought would help me with the seven, but instead yeah. I just got stuck kind of with his left shoulder hanging okay. out by the gate. Tell us about the triple combination. It's scopy. It's hard. The horses, you know, we get a little, they get really distracted because it's right up against the VIP tent um, and they can sense all the people there. You have to go around the other water. Mm -hmm. They just really don't know where they're going. The vertical is really tall. The oxer, it's short to wide. So they have short to, be to wide. So no question. Scope, scope, scope all day long. And then once you have scope, you have to have carefulness because it's a very short two. So it's, it's a good um, gymnastic exercise for the horses <laughs> <laughs> and riders to stay on. You look, uh, this horse looks great of yours, though. I know it you're is. excited. You're, you're, I was talking about you. You're developing a string. You're looking at the young horses, looking to the future. Mm -hmm. And many of you are doing that right now. And I, I, I applaud you because we need to be making our own a little bit more, don't we? Talk about that for a moment. Absolutely. You know, I was really fortunate to have a superstar in a horse called Ilion, but he's 18 years old now. And... Uh, you know, and it's difficult to go out and just buy one to do this. You really have to uh, make them up. And all of the riders that were on our Olympic team and brought home the gold, they all brought those horses along See, and so into the Grand Prix and yes, developed yes. that relationship with them. And I have this horse, which I believe is a superstar, and I have another one here that I just brought here. Um, my third horse show with him. I did the meter 45 class with him. I watched you on it earlier this and week. I think he's going to be phenomenal. So I have a lot of hopes for the next couple of years. And then I really enjoyed coming here because I think it was sort of an integral part in their learning experience and building them up into hopefully international show jumping stars. Hey, speaking of, Callan is really showing us she's she's on it. Come on, one more jump, Callan. Wow. Callan's had a super horse show here. Come on. Oh, the tallest jump on the course, her. the Animal Planet she, uh, jump. 
She won the uh, speed derby. She was blazing was it, fast. It was great. We've, yeah, we've was spoke fun. with her quite a bit, and she was terrific. What do you think? Talk to me about what you just said, which is every single one of those riders on our Olympic team made those horses. That's very important for everybody to know, viewers right now, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. BZ had Authentic from the time she was seven, he was seven years old, brought, her along, brought him along. McLean got Sapphire, I think, at seven or eight years old and brought Correct. her along. Um, Laura, Laura Kraut got Cedric at, I think, seven and a half or eight years old, started him in, I remember when she started him in the meter 35 yes. in Calgary. She's like, isn't he great? And I'm like, nice pony. Exactly. We all said that, remember? And she and said she, you, she believed in him. Always believed in him, yes. and she made it happen. Um, and Will, a year ago, he was having trouble getting around the meter 40 in he, Calgary. He really was, right? I yeah, mean, that's, that's what people don't Jurgen, realize. Yeah, and who works for me and was like, what do I do? I can't control it. And he worked it out. You know, he really used all of his horsemanship skills and made a relationship with that horse. So. And so this is really important for viewers to understand that it's about making the horses yes it takes talent it takes scope it takes range of a jump but the bottom line is we have to make them absolutely and you everybody develops their own personal relationship with a horse and, and it takes a long time I tell people it's like learning a new language every time you get on a new animal and you know it takes a while until you're fluent with each other <laughs> So true. And here's a perfect example. Jeannie Hobbs, she went on the Developing Riders Tour. You know all about that. Tell Absolutely. me what you think this probably did for this uh, horse and rider combination this summer. Uh, the Developing Rider Tour is absolutely fabulous. Um, I did it uh, two years, and it is what developed Ilion and myself. From my, Coming back from my first tour, I won the Grand Prix of Harrisburg. And I think for these young riders, it's so important to get international exposure yeah. because it's very different over there, and it's also similar. And you start to wow. learn what it is over there and then you realize it's really still the same sport it's the, at the same end of the sport day. and you know we can't thank you enough for stopping by really because it's all about you people you horse women you women who are out there competing with the guys every single week making these horses we're proud of you Skylar Riley back in a moment live Hampton Classic Grand Prix great thank you thank you And we're back live here. Joining me now is Peter Leone, as he was a little busy a little bit earlier doing some training in the warm-up area. Oh, we got a great course out there today, <laughs> Scott. Um, you know, I was really rooting, cheering, and helping uh, James, you know, for ba James Benedetto. But it seems like quite a tough course. That last oh. jump is just a monster. It's huge. Animal Planet is definitely putting some pressure on us. And now we have Alistair in the ring. Alistair Gatherum on Santana. This is and a big trick. Unfortunately, Alistair had the first jump down. He and there's did. a lot of course to go when you have the first jump down. This has proved to be very difficult. This double Liverpool's early in the course. The time allowed is tight. Conrad hasn't given us any room to breathe. No. Skylar O'Reilly just joined us, Peter, before you got here, and she was just giving us a little bird's eye view of what she was feeling and the questions that were being asked of her young horse. And she said, you know, I had all the jump in the world, but after this water, fence number seven that you see Alistair jumping right now, there's the real question. Do you stay a little bit on the inside and gallop in the six strides, or do you stay out for the seven strides and then take the shot and take the chance that happened to Jimmy Toronto? Right, exactly. Well, that's the beautiful thing about the sport. It can be done right many different ways. There's no one correct way to do it. Exactly. And Allie's doing a good job here. That's a very difficult triple. And I have to say, you know, out of respect to Skylar, this is not a course I'd like to be riding a green horse over. Oh. And she couldn't have been happier with him. She just said it was a lot for him to deal with, but she was, couldn't have been happier with her young horse. There's Allie's horse oh. acting quite green, really hung up at the hedge there. And he's going to have time faults as well. You know, Allie again riding out of the Four Seasons farm and a uh, wonderful show jumping stable, hunter jumper stable. They sure, and, and this has been a family, the Linder family, that have been so supportive of horse sports in our country. You know, I mean, it's not often that you go around the course with two down or three down no. and feel like you did a good job. <laughs> but on well, Hampton Classic <laughs> Sunday, you're happy to just have two Absolutely. down. Absolutely. Now we have a Canadian rider, Jonathan Aslan. He is a, a member of the, the Southern family through marriage. 
um, the founders and creators of the Spruce Meadows Masters. So this guy has jumped a few natural jumps. What do you think, Peter? Without question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jonathan, you know, given where he's coming from, he knows, he knows the terrain. And, you know, it has been said that the Hampton Classic is our Calgary. Exactly. And, you know, Debbie Stevens said earlier this week, she said we were talking about it in Hong Kong, and at one point somebody turned around and said, that's your Aachen. Hampton Classic is your Aachen. So that's why we take such pride in this horse show. Now, Jonathan is a lot of experience. He's going nice and direct and prompt from one to two. The early part of the course is a chance to get ahead of the time allowed because goodness knows you want to take a little time oh, getting to that last absolutely. jump. Absolutely. Tall vertical. And it's interesting, The now there the double liver pulls did not pose a problem for Jonathan and his horse. Surprise. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and all week this end jump has been difficult. We've watched it all week, haven't we? On different yeah. angles, but it's still in that same spot. The horses in general have been jumping that skinny wide square oxer very well this week and today they seem to as well. There's the water. Jonathan does the seven strides. That was a smart move. Yeah, it really was. I think that given the way you're approaching the water, it throws you out right to left anyway, which invites invites the uh, the seven. Exactly. And as, as Skyler said, for somebody like myself with a horse that bulges left, she goes, I didn't have a choice. So Jonathan's working on a he is you know i mean there's there's so many yes. obstacles out there i can barely see the top poles you know through the hampton classic hedge but this the crowd the, oh going yeah on. fti here is the eight still up he's oh, oh my goodness just got a little too deep to the signature hampton classic hedge and now the last jump you know, a great round to a normal exactly. round. Exactly. In all of about five seconds. Absolutely. Snap of a finger, and there it was. That's too bad. Eight faults. Well within the time, but eight faults. Too bad. You know, he really rode beautifully. He allowed himself to get too deep to that hedge jump. You know, and the horse got stuffed up, as we say. Yep. Into that front rail. And then... You know, that, that last jump's just hard, no matter oh. how perfectly you ride it. I mean, coming off of that line off the hedge and then immediately turning to the right, tallest jump on the course, Animal Planet definitely uh, playing havoc for this group today. Let's see how... We've got Chris Kapler now on BDL Orlant or Oranta. Um, this is Chris's number one horse. He's a big game, a big day rider. This is a big day horse. He's been waiting all week for this afternoon. He sure has. Now we're talking about a team gold medalist from the Athens Games, individual silver. Great under the gun, this guy. Can ride under pressure. And he jumped that line at like it was oh, high schooling jumper. Beautiful. Meaning a training class for those of you that aren't familiar. Horses jumping very informed today, giving the giving the jumps a lot of loft. A little deep. But up and over he goes. Chris knows his horse. He knows when to challenge him and when not to. Now let's see what he does here. Looks like he's going in on the on the six. There it is. Did it beautifully. And what's important is he's going from one jumping question right to the next. He's right. not wasting any time. You can really see the difference with him. It's, it's real intention with that. Because if he can go clear, he knows that a time fault just isn't good enough. Chris still doing it. He's four jumps from home. Come on. Now fatigue is starting to, to be a challenge that Chris has to account for with his horse. The tall FTI vertical. Fit in the four. Come Fit on. it in. Still up. Looks like he's okay on time. Yep. <laughs> it wouldn't hurt to have some luck here. Yes! Oh, he had some luck. He had he's, some luck. No jumping, no time. Terrific. And no surprise. No surprise, but a little bit of luck at the last jump. What do you think, Peter? 
That, you know, it, luck was with him. It, you need some luck Abs- every once oh, in a while. That was a, that's a tall jump. He didn't Excellent. use any luck anywhere else. <laughs> he sure didn't. He deserved it. That was a, a veteran.